Thank you for joining our Deep Brain Stimulation Educational Series. This series will provide important information that we hope will answer many of the questions you may have about DBS. The information in this four-part series will be reviewed with you further during your preoperative appointments. We encourage you to write down any questions you may have as you watch the series and bring them to your appointments. There, we will take the time to answer your questions, review your expectations, and address any concerns you and your family have. This is the first of four video presentations in our series. We will begin by reviewing the process to become a candidate for deep brain stimulation surgery. Then we will discuss locations in the brain that are used for DBS, how DBS can help, what are the limitations of DBS, the components of the DBS system, and a review of the risks and complications of surgery. We will conclude by considering whether DBS is right for you and summarize next steps. Let's start with the evaluation process to determine eligibility for surgery. Eligibility process for DBS. Determining if you are a good candidate for surgery requires a thorough evaluation. It begins when your neurologist refers you to a movement disorders neurologist. The movement disorders neurologist will review your history, perform a neurological examination, and discuss deep brain stimulation with you. If you and the neurologist feel it is appropriate to proceed, a brain MRI will be ordered and appointments for neuropsychological testing and on and off medication videotaping will be scheduled. The neuroscience team, a group of specialists including neurosurgeons, neurologists, neuropsychologists, and other supporting staff will review the videotape, neuropsychological report, and MRI results and make recommendations about surgery and continued medical care. Anatomy of the Target Areas of the Brain Now we will focus on the actual surgery by looking at areas of the brain that deep brain stimulation targets. There are three primary areas where the deep brain stimulator lead may be implanted for movement disorders. VIM is an area of the thalamus used for essential tremor. GPI and STN are the two primary locations used for Parkinson's disease. These small specific sites are located deep in the brain. Electrodes implanted in these areas will send electrical signals to the targeted sites that can improve the symptoms of the disease. How can DBS help? Let's spend a few minutes talking about the benefits of deep brain stimulation. One of the biggest benefits of DBS is the ability to help improve the problematic movements associated with Parkinson's disease. These include tremor, rigidity or stiffness, and bradykinesia, which is slowness of movement. DBS can indirectly improve dyskinesia, the involuntary movements that are a side effect of medication. DBS may allow you to lower your medication dosage. It may also help balance out the fluctuations or on and off time that many people experience. DBS generally helps the same symptoms of Parkinson's disease that your medications help with. We know that tremor does not always improve with medication, but generally it will be helped with deep brain stimulation. What are the limitations of DBS? It is important to understand that DBS does not cure Parkinson's disease or essential tremor, but for many people, deep brain stimulation can provide tremendous benefit and improve quality of life. Some people see improvement with tremor stiffness, dyskinesia, or other symptoms that affect them on a daily basis. DBS is not a substitute for medication. While there are benefits from deep brain stimulation, it is important to understand that you will need to continue your medication. However, the ability to reduce the amount of medication is an advantage for many people. DBS does not help with balance problems and the falls often associated with balance instability. 
There are various walking problems associated with Parkinson's disease, such as unsteadiness, quickened stride, and freezing, which is the inability to move your feet while walking. These generally do not improve with deep brain stimulation, and occasionally walking problems get worse after DBS surgery. Speech problems related to the softness of your voice and lack of clarity of speech will not improve either. It is important to understand that symptoms that do not improve when you take your medication probably will not improve with DBS. Components of the DBS system Let's shift gears now and talk about the mechanical components of deep brain stimulation. There are three components implanted. First, the DBS lead with small electrodes at the tip. Second, the extension wire that runs from the lead under the scalp down the neck to the third component, which is the implantable pulse generator, IPG, also referred to as the neurostimulator or battery. Each person also has a user-friendly patient controller for turning the IPG on and off, checking battery status, and making adjustments after the stimulator is turned on. This image demonstrates the system as it looks when it is implanted. The lead is implanted so that the electrodes at the tip are in the targeted area of the brain. The extension wire connects the brain leads to the neurostimulator in the chest wall. All of the components are under the skin. Now that we know about the benefits of deep brain stimulation and have seen the components of the deep brain stimulator system, let us move on to concerns and possible complications of DBS surgery. Risks and Complications of DBS As we know, there are risks associated with any surgery. The most concerning complications we see with DBS surgery are stroke, seizure, and infection. The risk of a stroke or seizure is 1 to 2 percent. A stroke from DBS surgery is usually caused by a small bleed in the brain. Symptoms can include weakness, paralysis, and slurred speech. Over time, these symptoms may improve. If there is a seizure, it usually happens soon after surgery and is unlikely to occur again. Infections can occur with any surgery. With DBS surgery, infections are usually at the incision site on the scalp or chest. An infection will be treated with antibiotics. However, if a serious infection develops, the electrode, extension wire, and neurostimulator may have to be removed. Additional complications may be changes in mood, such as depression and possible confusion after surgery. Speech difficulties most often occur when the neurostimulator is turned on and may be temporary associated with programming. Some patients may experience a worsening of walking and balance problems. These problems may or may not improve over time. Finally, other complications that can be encountered are problems with the DBS components. The system is tested during surgery and again at the first programming appointment after surgery. Problems with the deep brain stimulation equipment are uncommon. Is DBS right for you? As you consider deep brain stimulation, you have to ask yourself, is DBS right for me? It is important to have realistic expectations about the risks and benefits of DBS surgery. The symptoms we identified that benefit from deep brain stimulation improve in varying degrees for each person. You will have a detailed discussion with your neurologist and neurosurgeon regarding DBS expectations. If you have been approved for DBS surgery, the neuroscience team believes you are an appropriate candidate and will benefit from deep brain stimulation. Summary and Next Steps Thank you for viewing our video on deep brain stimulation. During this video, we have provided an overview of deep brain stimulation surgery. We addressed the target areas in the brain, the various components of the deep brain stimulation system, and how they look implanted in the body. The benefits of DBS such as reduction in tremor, improvement in stiffness and bradykinesia, along with decreasing dyskinetic movement were reviewed. 
We also discussed symptoms that were not likely to improve with deep brain stimulation so that each person can have realistic expectations of surgery. Finally, we looked at the risks involved with DBS surgery. As we conclude, let's preview what we have coming in our DBS educational series. Our next video, the second in our series, will look at how you can prepare for surgery, what to expect during your hospitalization, and some details about the surgical procedure. Our third video will focus on the care you will need at home after surgery, including monitoring for complications and your activity during the healing process. Our final video in the series will review the actual programming of your neurostimulator after surgery and specific information for patients once they have a DBS device implanted. We hope you found this information helpful. Please enjoy the next video in our Deep Brain Stimulation Educational Series.